Welcome to Third Chances, a talk show where we like to hear from people who devoted their life to health, fitness and wellness. Medical professionals, health coaches and all the others who help us every day to cure our body, mind or soul. Those who always look for more natural, holistic ways to help even more people to live a happier and healthier life. Those who don't like to give up easily and settle on you or themselves. It is never too late or too soon. I always believe that every one of us deserves not just a second chance, but as many as we need. I'm Vera, your host. Who better than a master of reinvention with an accent to guide you through it, right? Just like they say, you are not a tree, so move. And God knows I have done just that in my own life many, many times. If you are not completely happy with the direction your life is going, this show may help you get the courage to change what is needed, find a new path and take charge. So come on over, pour yourself a glass of wine and spend some time with us. Let's laugh and cry together and get inspired by people just like you and me who overcame their own doubts and took a leap of faith to reinvent their life on their own terms. I hope and pray that we help you on that journey. And if you feel so compelled and inspired, please let us know. Don't be shy. Who knows? You may just be our next featured guest with another inspiring success story. So here we go. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of podcast where I have a special guest, Raj Slaughter, and it, you are in for some treat because Raz is quite captivating personality. And if you can watch this on, on uh, uh, YouTube, please do. Raz, the motivator, Slaughter, is a motivational speaker who has invested 22 years in helping parents and teens improve their mindset and take charge of their life. Born with a physical disability and raised by a single mother who suffered from alcohol and drug addiction, Raz has been labeled countless times and told that he had limitations and that there would be things he couldn't do, be, or achieve. Despite these messages, Raz was born with a growth mindset and set out to create a life of his own and not what others expect of him. As a color code interpersonal skills trainer and NLP practitioner, Raz has tools to help parents and teenagers overcome limiting beliefs and reach their full potential. Raz has owned and operated five private training studios for two decades. Today, Raz is three times author and in-demand online parenting and teen coach, teen life coach. He's also a cyclist, personal trainer, and devoted husband. And his favorite food is chicken parmesan. Look at that. Raz, Raz, Raz. We met at a networking event. It was one of my first that I met people in person after the COVID thing. And I was, first of all, smitten by your huge smile. You were such a captivating personality. Welcome to my podcast and thank you for making time for us. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share my story with your audience and just kind of collaborate. And that's what it's all about. Having, get, having the opportunity to share a little bit of inspiration and motivation for those who may be listening or watching on YouTube and learn from you as well. Absolutely. You, what's, what really smitten me when I first saw you and realized the, the amount of the physical disability you have because I never met you in person. We saw each other on Zoom and up here, you are all built up. <laughs> you right. are all fitness and health. But then I saw you, you, you have challenged walking and I'm like, damn, he is not selling himself like that. He is selling himself, screw that. I'm not giving up. I'm not, I'm not gonna be victim here, which is huge plus for you. I bet from all of your life, do you think that this came from your grandma who was raising you? Absolutely. I, I think that it, it came from my grandmother at the root. Um, she was um, someone who was, she was born in Montgomery, Alabama during a time of a period where if you were an African-American, you were treated less than as a human being. 
And she had to overcome a lot of her own challenges. She only had a second grade education. Mm. And so she couldn't read or write. So she really had a lot of pride in herself and listening and focusing on being a good person and her character because she knew her own limitations. Mm. I first started to learn, you know, our limitations don't have to dictate our future through her. She always was willing to welcome people into her home. She was very friendly. She was very open. And those characteristics transmuted into my personality yeah. through watching and modeling her. Yeah, and that's best. That's definitely the strength and humility and and pride I feel from you when you you know you don't need to be talking about yourself, but you show you you show by action, you show by determination. I was following you on Facebook. Uh, Raj is setting goals that are crazy for healthy people and he's overcoming them. Of course, he's achieving them and doing more. Right now, you, you're in the middle of your challenge with bicycle, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I found um, in 2018, I moved to Florida and I was gifted a bike inside of my garage. There was nothing else in the house but a bike. Oh. And I looked at this bike and I'm like, wow, I haven't ridden a bike in a really long time. I'm gonna go for a bike ride. I started riding. First time I went out for a ride, I went for like three miles. And I was like, wow, I went, I rode my bike for three miles. Well, fast forward to um, about uh, April 15th, I completed 70 miles on a road bike and, and it was great. And it's just something that I love to do. And I like pushing myself. When you're uncomfortable, that's where growth happens. And I like to share that with parents, students, or anyone that I have the ability to coach is that your limitations really are your own and they're the six inches between your ears. And now I'm set off for doing what uh, would be equivalent to a marathon on a bike, which is the century. And I'll be riding uh, in Tampa in October. Uh, yeah, that's totally fascinating. So that's funny thing, like one little gesture that somebody left bike behind and look what comes out of it. That's amazing. I love that. But let's go back to really your youth. And um, I would like to kind of get the picture. What was your childhood like? Because obviously with mom, with mom's challenges, um, you were probably raised by your grandmother. Yeah. So my stories, I would say, starts when I was born. I was born with my right leg shorter than the other by two and a half inches. So if you're watching this, basically, it's about that much difference from my right and my left leg. So I walk on my tippy toes on my right toe and I have a normal leg on my left. For those who are in fitness or exercise know that my knee is fused at, so it's basically, it doesn't move. It has about a four degree range of motion. Um, so basically my right side of my body has no absorption. I just, every impact is absorbed throughout my leg into my hip and my lower back. Um, this is something that until I was about 13, I walked with crutches. Um, I had two surgeries uh, when I was younger, and I was one of the first people to have something called the Elizaroff surgery. And it's a it's rings with pins, and it, the goal was to straighten my leg and then lengthen it. It took six and a half months to straighten my leg with this apparatus, which I thought, you know what, this is amazing. I'm going to be normal. I'm going to be just like all the other kids. And that's what the doctors promised. And that's what my mom believed. And so did I. As a young, naive child, I was like, this is what is going to happen. But what happened at six and a half months is that they took the apparatus off and my leg was straight. And my little 12 year old self asked the doctor, so how will my leg stay straight? And he looked down at me and he basically said, you're going to have to wear a brace for the rest of your life on that leg because you don't have the muscle to hold it there. What muscle was he talking about? The quadricep, which is the front of the thigh and the hamstring. Hmm. Little bell went off in my head at that moment where I was like, I'm going to have to wear a brace the rest of my life. So what was I'm being for, right? yeah, yeah. I'm being picked on now. I'm being bullied now. I'm being <laughs> like laughed at and made fun of now. Can you imagine what my life was going to be like having this long brace my entire life? And that was a defi defining moment in my life. They let me go home for two weeks and I went to my grandmother's house at this time. She lived on Long Island, New York, and we lived upstate New York in Utica, New York. And I went there and for these two weeks, and this is where the story gets really a little bit crazy because my grandma has a strong faith in God. 
And she said, you know what, you were born this way. God must have wanted you to be this way. And at that moment, I said, I'm never going to have another surgery on my leg again. I was 12 years old there. And I've never had another surgery. Strong, strong minded. At that it, it was just, it was, I knew that that was it. And, you know, and so, you know, I let this leg always just be me because I truly believe that we are all unique and special and have gifts. And some of us have limitations, but our limitations are on the exterior. Some of them are on the interior. And mine just so happened to be my leg. And I utilize that to share with kids that, you know, no matter if you're five, you're 10, 15, 50, you have to embrace your own unique abilities so that others will embrace you. Which is so important message, especially today when kids are being smitten by social media, following everybody's so-called perfect life that is virtual and going to depressions and stuff. I found your work fascinating because I, I don't know anybody else who specialized to kids and teenagers and I know how important it is. But let's let's go back to how, but like I, <clears throat> trying to relate, you are, you know, handicapped, you have uh, bullies in school, uh, you feel terrible about that. and. How did you find the strength then to kind of stand up to it or stand up for yourself or not let it get to your head as many others would crawl in the corner and just, you know, like I'm giving up, I don't go to school or whatever. Where was the strength coming from at that point? Um, I would love to, to be uh, so say, I, I, I just, I learned it a lot. We, we have innate abilities. Um, and having a growth mindset now as a coach and a professional, I recognize what it was. But when I was younger, it was just if you told me I couldn't, I must. And that's what I, I created my own belief system. Like stubbornness, maybe? Kind Absolutely. Of, yeah. It was yeah. it was just like I, I was not going to be told I couldn't do something. If right. the kids were running, I'm running. If the kids were on a skateboard, I'm on a skateboard. But what happens is once you do something over and over, you start to recognize a pattern. Yeah. And I started to recognize this strength in me that, you know what? I have some grit that not everybody has. I have some, some inner determination that not everyone has. And then I started to use that to translate into other areas of my life, whether it was sports, you know, I wrestled in high school and college. And that was the same thing. I never wanted this disability to be a disability. I was able to change the disability into an ability and allowed it to be my strength, not my weakness. That's fascinating. I, I love this. When when uh, when came the point that you realized you want to use this for your life work? Was it did you begin coach right away or did you go through a process to get there? Um, that's a great question. Um, again, I, I mean, we as humans, sometimes I found that people want to be self-made. I'm not self-made. I am faith-made. And what I mean by that is that I, it was through the chance that a buddy of mine was became a personal trainer at a gym mm -hmm. on Long Island. And I was like, you know what? I don't really have any direction. I didn't have a father. I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have anyone in my family that was successful. And to be honest, I needed to make some money. I had to support my grandmother and I. So I knew how to exercise. I've been exercising for fitness for a long time. And I said, hey, if, if he can do it, I can do it. And I got my first certification as a personal trainer. And I fell in love with the ability to utilize my body to inspire and motivate others to overcome their own limitations and challenges. Mm -hmm. And it was an instant, like I, I, I'm a fun person, I believe. I like to talk to people, yeah. I like to engage, <laughs> I like to socialize. So being a personal trainer was a natural um, transition for me out of college. And I, I did that for so long and I just kind of started to go, I, take on that same grit and I read books and I hired coaches and I learned and I learned before you know it, I was one of the best in the world at what I was doing. And I had wound up helping thousands of people transform. And I found a unique niche within the personal training world that I was really good with. I worked with women who were between 40 and 60 entering perimenopause and postmenopause. And they were struggling with the, the mental side of losing weight and battling their hormones. And when you specialize in something, you become very selected, but also you become exclusive. And that's how I built my gyms. That's wonderful. 
but then somehow <clears throat> you transformed into concentrating on kids and teenagers. How that happened? That transition happened like a lot of us, how we met because uh, we had to go and, and do something different. And March 14th, 2020, that date is etched in my heart and, and in my head like 9-11. You know, that was a day where everything changed for me. And I thought I had a nice cushy business and life was good. And I had I finally hit that place where I can breathe. I moved my family from New York to Florida and we were living that sunshine life. And COVID happened and my gym shut down instantly. We all were in lockdown. And I'm like, wow, what am I going to do to make a living? You know, I created this standard of life that was dependent on my businesses and people coming to my locations. Yeah. That's the key. It wasn't a virtual world yet where we could yeah. do a lot of things online. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I said, you know what? I think this is God winking at me, telling me that this chapter of my life is over and I, I have something else greater to do. And I pivoted. And I shut down the gyms and I've never looked back and we created, my wife and I sat down and I said, "Hun, I don't know what I wanna do, but it's not in the personal training, it's not in fitness, um, it'll always have a health component, but I wanna work with kids like me who were struggling with mental health, who were struggling with feeling like they weren't enough, who were being bullied, who had families who were struggling with drugs and alcohol and abuse and all of the things that I had went through and seen in my life, but I felt like I turned the corner and came out on the other side. And when you do that, you can go back and now you can share some of the insights that you have acquired. Yeah. And this is what I get to do now. And I created a program called the Unstoppable Teenager, which is a coaching program for teenagers and their parents to bring that connection together because teenagers today are not like they were 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. They're further along in their developmental process because they see so much, but emotionally they can't handle that and parents can't handle it. So what I do is I try to bring them together and educate them both on being self-aware, but most importantly, teaching them the three C's, which is clarity, who am I? communication, what am I saying to myself, and how can I be confident in my own skin? Because it takes loving yourself in order to step out into this world and truly shine. That's, that's the ultimate reinvention that my podcast is all about. What you do when something happens and you cannot follow the path that you chose for yourself, no matter how successful you were, you know, external con consequences can happen and you have to you have to shift. And I think this was brilliant, brilliant shift for you because you you can bring so much into the table because you can relate to all of it. You you have heard it all, you you have lived it all. You you didn't just study some theoretical, you know, approaches. You lived through it and you found that strength in you and now being professionally trained and, and having, you know, having the coaching training, you can bring so much to the table. I, I totally love it. I, I was really smitten by you the first time we spoke on Zoom, just by, just by the conversations we were having. And I'm like, what a brilliant niche that is needed that not everybody does, you know, like life coaching is such a broad subject and you right. can be whatever you want. But when you have a strong personal story that you bring to to the table, it makes such a bigger impact for, you know, the, that teenager that sits back and, and feeling like worthless and couldn't, doesn't have anybody in life to, to help them. You didn't do, you didn't have mentors or coaches or anything like that, but maybe you have that strong headed grandmother that installed the right values in you, you know, that you just found that strength somehow in you. Okay, sorry about this. We had some technical difficulties and we have to interrupt the Zoom, which has never happened to me, but every time is something first, right? So we are back in business and I was going to ask Raz, um, I'm really intrigued with his business and I would like to, to hear from you. If somebody is listening who may have a troubled teenager and doesn't know what to do and they don't want to go for therapy and all the regular routes and medications, which I hardly discourage people to do. Uh, you may be a wonderful solution for working with their kid to regain that confidence and regain that purpose of life because that's, I think, where they are struggling the most. 
seeing all the virtual stuff and you know being falsely at, assuming that this is everybody's perfect life and I'm the miserable one it right. easily creates the victim personality and if anybody you would be the perfect person to snap them out of it for sure but I know that's not how it works <laughs> I would like to know if somebody's considering hiring you what does it involve how does it how does it look like what does it look like for the parents and for the kid to be involved with you tell us a little bit about it Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, so it really starts with, you know, having a conversation with the parents. Um, I always have a, a consultation with the parents and usually I try to get both the father, the mother, if that's the, the case or partner and partner. Mm -hmm. And we, we really just kind of discuss on where are they currently now and, and what's the biggest challenges that they see that they're dealing with with their children. And a lot of times parents come to me and they're like, my, my son, my daughter, this, that, and the next. And then I let them know that, you know, children do what we say, what we do, not what we say. So I turn it around and let them know that this is not a babysitting program. My coaching is more about me empowering you as a parent to find your unique parenting style and get empowering your child to find their unique abilities. So the first step is having that call. And then I give them, I coach them on how to get their kid on a call with me. I call this first section, session a rapport session. My coaching is permission based. So unlike therapy and, and counseling and school and all that, if the kid and I don't gel and meaning at the end of that call, I say, you know what, Are, do you feel like you got value from the call? And would you like to continue working with me as your mentor to help you overcome some of these challenges that, that we discussed on this session? Mm -hmm. If they say yes, thumbs up, we move forward. If they say, you know what, I'm not sure, I say, okay, is there anything I can answer for you right now? I say, do you need some time to think about it? And if they say yes, I'll, say, I'll follow up with you a little bit. But I can tell you that over the last two and a half years of doing probably a couple hundred rapport calls, you know, the, the cool thing about it is that most of the kids are seeking to have someone else outside of their parents yeah. that will listen to them and actually hear and feel what they're going through. Yeah. Um, and they say, yes, I would like to continue. Then after that, the next step is I, re I reconnect with their parents and I set them up with my assessment. Mm -hmm. And this assessment allows for us to have insights into their unique personality and their parents have to take the assessment as well. So now we can bring connection within the family because we start to speak and communicate in the same language or what we call our driving core motive. This allows us to talk to each other and understand rather than speaking and waiting to be to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the process. Most my program is a 90 day um, transformation phase one. It's four different phases, but phase one is 90 days. And that's where I work with the parent and the team to really overcome any of those immediate limitations and challenges that they're having and start to build a foundation for future growth. Okay, so is, is it, do you ever work with them together or is it mostly you work with the child separately and with the, with the parents separately? So that great question. Um, usually after about six or seven sessions, um, I'll ask the, the student, would you mind if we brought your parent on to one of our coaching calls so that we can balance and hear both sides? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when you we have enough rapport, we've gotten some momentum, and that's when we bring it in. And then we take them back out because this is a mentor-student relationship. As I'm building their confidence, we have a relationship where it's trust. It's they can come to me with things that they're not telling their parents. Right. And I let them know that I keep it real raw and raws. And I never am going to uh, t not tell their parent what we're talking about unless it's something that they're going to harm themselves. Yeah. And then I say, there's a due deal. I have to I have a responsibility as a coach and a, to, and a parent to tell your parents. Um, and I'm great to say that I haven't had that yet. And our relationships just go from there. That's fascinating. I, I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving the idea how, you know, some I'm just like I'm not a parent myself I had the two uh, stepdaughters but I never had my own kids but I was babysitting my niece and nieces and I was always involved but I, I'm just like it's running through my head if I was a parent 
how some people may think, <clears throat> okay, I have troubled teenager, let them give it to Ras and that he will fix them. You know, and it's not <laughs> working like that. <laughs> Absolutely not. That and and I let the parent know in our call, like this is not me babysitting. You know, it's important that you are. This, I call it a proactive parent. Yeah. And if you're going to be a proactive parent, you have to be hands on. And when I say hands on, is you got to be willing to listen to some of the things that your child is telling you that you're doing that's causing their trauma and pain. And you also have to be open minded to some of the suggestions that I'm going to give you about changing your parenting style. Yeah. And it's never a judgment. It's always me empowering because I tell them my own story. And like you, Vera, um, I have two amazing step boys. Um, I never call them step boys, but, you know, they're my children and I've had they're them my before. bonus daughters. <laughs> <laughs> right exactly yeah. and but i the reason that and one of the, the funniest transition to this is like i my son my youngest is has a unique personality he's a little bit shy he's funny but i'm a little i'm different my personality is so different you tell me i can't i must you guys have heard that right and he's more like kind of like reserved and i was bringing that energy to him and i realized wow we're not connecting mm -hmm. i'm not able to motivate my own son but i'm the motivator so I had to go internal and ask myself, what is my challenge? Well, I was trying to speak to him in Japanese and he was speaking to me in Spanish and we weren't connecting our personalities. So when I found Dr. Hartman in the color code, it allowed me to install this one strategy into my program, which now gave me a tool that allowed me to go, okay, how do we connect through personalities? Whether it's, and it's a four colors, red, blue, white, and yellow. They mean something, but all it really does is allows us to go, what are my strengths? What are my limitations? What do I need to work on? And how do I speak to this person? And if you do that in your parenting, what happens now is that your children start feeling like they're heard and seen. Yeah. Not that you're talking at them, that you're preaching to them, and you're always saying what they're not doing, but you start actually installing ways and beliefs and values in them that they are go, oh, and then you give them a reason to want to be motivated. Yeah. Give them a reason to want to tell you things as opposed to always just saying, OK, yes, OK, no, I'm sorry, I'll do, I won't do that again. Right, right. Listen, this is this is interesting. The, the question just popped to my head. When you're dealing with that, uh, who do you find most challenging to change parents or kids? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I, I don't I don't try to change anyone. Right. What I try to do is empower I, I them. I mean more like, yeah, open their mind. Like Yes. Yeah. I, I, I want them to open their mind to new concepts, new ideas. And so and you, you in my introduction, you shared a little bit about my background and my resume of being a neuro-linguistic programmer. Mm -hmm. So I use different strategies that I've acquired that help change my life over. And your thinking is one of the key things, right? So in neuro-linguistic programming, you're able to change your belief systems. Yeah. And when I tell a parent, you know what, if you're labeling a child bad, you're labeling a child, child um, ADHD or ADD or any other label, they're going to perform and show up in the world that way. It's there. So yeah. my first goal is helping them change their belief systems. And once I do that, then they start to see the interaction with their children change. And then like, oh, this works, what else can we do? And, and then I stack the different strategies. Working with kids, they're still very malleable. They're still very open. They're still, you can, they, if you can create just a little chink in their belief system, they'll start to open up. See, because they're not hardened like adults. This is who I am. This is who I, who I was made to be. I can't change. Or they may have this belief, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? We've heard these things. But what I share is that you can, if you have an open mind. And you heard me say, boom, a thousand times, right? Yes. It comes down to building open-minded, optimistic, and motivated teens. And the way we do that is that, oh, that first one, we have to be open-minded. Yeah, and it's not, it's not easy to learn that you do something wrong and that's why your child acting the way it's act. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be tough because not, as I found in my own coaching, not everybody is open to coaching. Not mm. everybody is open to, to see things differently or to actually look at the mirror and realize it's you who is doing it. A hundred percent. Yeah. So what is, what is, what is it that you like the most about your work? What now is being few years in. 
it's evolving. So if you, if you would have asked me day one when I launched the business, what my business would be or whom I would be working with or what would the strategies I'd be using, it's all changed. And every client I bring on is changing. And I'm actually in another pivot, making it so that I could bring it out to even more um, parents because I was so focused. My love is the kids. Um, so it's like, I almost, you know, like how, like, if you like to grill, the vegetables are kind of like that little side thing that you just kind of boil up and no seasoning. Well, that's what I was doing with my parent coaching. I really wasn't diving in and giving them the tools and resources they needed to and to level their parenting style up. Um, so now I'm going back to the drawing board and really focusing on that because I'm bringing these kids in there empowered and they have open minds and their growth minds and they're shifting and they're coming back to me and they're saying, Roz, my mom still calls me this. My mom's still cheap yeah, treating me exactly. this way. It's so important part of this. You can't you can fix one part and leave the other part untouched. Yeah. But you so, would never found out if you didn't start somewhere and learn your way through, okay, this is not going to work if we only concentrate on one part of the occasion. It's like coaching one partner in a relationship and the other partner doesn't change anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. So what's what's now in front of you? And also, I wanted to ask you, do you do you um, inject your fitness background into your coaching with, with the kids? Absolutely. All day, every day and twice on Sunday. Fitness is everything. So the first thing that we can do and you is that if you want to change your state, what do you have control over? You have control over your body and it doesn't mean you about losing weight it's you know it doesn't have to deal with wanting to have a six pack abs it's just moving physically is empowering and changes your emotional state so if you're dealing with anxiety or depression or you're not feeling your best we need to get your body moving so absolutely i use you know i, I all of my programs come with some type of physical activity whether it's teaching them to do a push-up challenge or going for a 15-minute walk or mindfulness i do a lot of breathe breath work with them i do a lot of meditation because Vera, you know in coaching we're in this world right today that we're all so wired and tight and and we don't know how to just release and I, you know, I get kids who are in college who I just right before we got on our Zoom here, you know, he's struggling with his semester and he was didn't know how he was going to talk. So rather than fix his problem, I did a 10 minute breathing exercise with him mm -hmm. just so that he could get back into his body. So that's what I'm excited about. That's what I love doing. And I can see the future of my business helping not just thousands, but millions of parents and teens because you know, we are in a world where we're not limited by distance and location anymore. Um, we have the power of the digital world to connect us. And, you know, I have a new book coming out probably in the uh, fall, um, specifically for parents to help them overcome their mental blocks so that they can become unstoppable parents. Yeah, and it's it's important because nobody nobody got kids with the with the instructions how to be parent we ha we all have to learn our way through it and we learn the best bit uh, through the mistakes and if you if you can get somebody on on your side like Raz who will who will lead you and guide you to so you can avoid some painful mistakes that that would cause you know unhappiness in your child that's definitely a huge huge impact that you can have in your life also, Raz is a motivational speaker, so you are wonderful on stage. If anybody is interested to bring some boom to their stage, and yeah, <laughs> please, please reach out. I will post all the connection and all his uh, contact information in the uh, podcast notes, uh, because if I had an event, I would want you to be on it. You are sunshine of of energy and I love to be around you because it's infectious. <laughs> so, you so you are having book coming out. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about to promote that we can talk people about what's what's next for you? Um, yeah, well, I think the biggest thing what's next for me is just to I, I, I'd love the opportunity just to have a conversation with anyone who has children um, anywhere from 10 to 18 and up 
that's maybe struggling or have some questions about how they can help their kid not just survive but thrive i give a free consultation on my website at rosslaughter.com or look me up on social media at Roz Slaughter, and that's r-a-h-z last name slaughter just like the house and uh, you can't find you can find me anywhere there that's the most important thing is just me sharing this information Vera, because great people like you giving me the platform to have the opportunity to share like you said there's not a lot of life coaches for teens we have life coaches we have business coaches we have all of the things in the world for adults but teens and when i say teens it really it's tweens and teens but more importantly it's those who are going through a transitional period um, the middle school time for especially young girls is very difficult mm -hmm. and they are they're really being asked to kind of adapt and mature and no one's teaching them how to do it and it can become a very tough period that is a formative you know for their formative years and that's what i'm able to help them understand themselves they don't need to worry about what other people think of them and uh and that's what i love doing each and every day so if anyone's struggling please reach out i'd love to have the opportunity to have a conversation with you and see where it goes from there very empowering yeah that's i wish i had somebody like that in my youth <laughs> me as well me yeah. as well yeah so if we if we're gonna part on one 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 big advice that you may give to somebody who is struggling maybe with troubled teenager right now what is the what are the three things that they may do right now to improve that situation if they are not ready to reach out to you what can, what is something that basic that they can improve right now in their life to start moving things great question so if you're watching or listening here's something really simple that you can do um, just to kind of start to shift become a catalyst for your own growth and it's called the b a s method it's a foundational principle that i teach not only parents and teens number one i want you to take a piece of paper out and i want you to set a timer for 15 minutes and i want you to write down all of your beliefs all of your beliefs about yourself about your life about your what is success what are your challenges what are your limitations what do you don't believe in what do you believe in your politics everything and then i want you to review that list and look at that list and see how many you're going to put a little in through something that says if it's negative or a P that's positive. And then do a little self evaluation of your beliefs. Because if you want to look at your children, you're a reflect, they're a reflection of you and what you're speaking every day. Then I want you to do the A. The A is for your attitude. What type of attitude are you leading? Are you a positive person? Are you an upbeat, open-minded, optimistic person? Or are you negative? When someone says to you, how is your day? I'm good, I'm hanging in there, it's okay, just another day. Then you gotta listen to the words you're using to describe your life because that's what you're manifesting. And then the last S is self-talk. What are you saying to yourself? And when you get up in the morning, are you excited? Are you feeling good? I am amazing, I am great. I am ready to make, I am a change agent. Or are you saying, oh, can't believe it's not Friday yet. It's only Thursday, it's only Wednesday. Because your self-talk actually is going to tell you how to manifest your body. When you walk into the office, when you walk into the hospital, wherever you work or whatever that is you do, if you can master your BAS, your beliefs, your attitude and your self-talk, you're gonna be able to transform yourself and your children's life and you may never even need me but if you do reach out because i'd love to be their coach i would love to work with you just to be with you <laughs> for sure because that energy seriously is infectious and i it's funny i have now opportunity to work with someone who is super negative and it's infectious too it affects you if you let it it's Absolutely. unbelievable it's and and no matter how you try it's it's somebody that I work with that she's constantly and even if she tries to show up on positive note it always it's always like it, give it half an hour <laughs> she's gonna be right back where she it's 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 so important and it affects the way you show up the way you show up for life the way you show up for work the way you show up for promotion if you it's absolutely that's it's fascinating. We, we all know it, but you put it in very simple words. Just look at these three things to check on yourself where you are and then, then be a judge of what your kids learn from you. Or absolutely, they are the mirror. <laughs> absolutely. 
That was such a pleasure talking to you, Raz. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, even though I don't have kids. I want some coaching myself. <laughs> that, was, that was fascinating. And I thank you so much for your time. I know how busy you are. And it was, you know, struggle with, with the scheduling. But I'm so grateful we made it happen. And I'm excited Absolutely. to put it out next, next Wednesday. It's going to be out live. And I just can't wait. Thank you so much. Vera, thank you so much. I really, it's, it's a pleasure to finally get this done. And I look forward to future conversations with you and sharing and insights. So uh, we have to do a one on one very soon just to yes. connect and yes. uh, just uh, chat and talk things all, all through. And to your audience, thank you for your time and your attention. I appreciate it so much. Have a wonderful day. And as always, be open minded, optimistic, and motivated. Boom! That's the Raz Motivator Slaughter for you. Boom! <laughs> <laughs>